culture in the city of Sardinia? Uh, in the early days, yes, uh, there were the beginnings of these Hispanic gangs. That those are generational gangs, as you probably know, in the LA area. And I don't know what they were called then, but they had. Uh, I remember once in seventh grade watching uh, some archetype white kid uh, get in a fight with a little torpedo. We called him, you know, the Hispanic kid. It was smaller than he was, but the Hispanic kid had brass knuckles and two older guys. They were seniors. After all, we were a six-year school supervising the fight. It wasn't very fair. I remember I was so impressed one Hispanic young man who was a senior was arguing with them about this kind of thing shouldn't be going on and blah, blah, which I thought was absolutely right. But being a little seventh grader who's going to say anything, we're just watching, right? Uh, but uh, yeah, there was, so they were, they were active. Uh, uh, but you know, that's before the drugs and all those things came in. Uh, when I was a teenager in the 50s, having a beer was a big deal. And anybody who was involved with drugs, uh, maybe a fraction of a percent of the student body might have something to do with drugs. They were all kind of downtrodden, down and out, something wrong with them or something. Uh, it was no, uh, the gangs, uh, no other, there were no other gangs at that time in Gardena. There are now. What, what gangs exist here? Uh, well, it's still, there's still the G13, the generational gang of Hispanic youngsters. They're still active. Uh, there's also, uh, there, there was a, a group called uh, what the heck they call themselves? Well, I think one of the Crips groups uh, in the African American area in the North, predominantly. So they, they exist. Uh, when a few years ago, I had a friend of mine who taught at Guardian High School told me that Washington High, the school just north of us, they got to freeze their enrollment the day school started. So the kids who came in late had to go to Gardena High. What kind of kids would come to school a week after school starts in September? Not the best kids. They'd go to Gardena High School and they turn out to be gang kids fighting with Gardena gang kids because they were going to a school that wasn't their school and they were caught. So that's when I became aware of there are other gangs in the area that uh, were involved. So they do exist and you see the graffiti. Did you um, have a lot to do with it when you were mayor? Well, we developed a graffiti program. You know, the, the, the psychology is the sooner you paint it out, the less you have of it. I remember one time we, we caught uh, these three boys, uh, that the police caught them, I should say. They went down all the way from one end of Gardena to the other on, along Normandy. Thousands of dollars worth of, dam worth of damage and uh, caught them and their parents were required to pay. Uh, one kid I knew because I'd coached him in the PARS program, his parents were the immigrants. And they, they, they agreed to pay five dollars a month and after a couple of months they moved out back to Mexico. C couldn't afford them. Extra money, I guess, but that was that tagging stuff that started coming in. It wasn't really, they weren't really gang members. There, this tagging groups had come around that had been more, more, more modern. Now, when I at, at Stephen White, where I taught from the, in the early in the mid '60s on there, the, 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 there was a, a couple groups of Hispanic gangs who were in the neighborhood. And I think they still exist. One of the whole neighborhood got redeveloped, and, they, and they, the housing all left, so they left. But the other is still there. And uh, oh, T Flats was one of them. It was called, it was called in Carson. Uh, another one was uh, the one over there by uh, by Main Street, or whatever they call themselves. And I remember, a kid checked in from Perry School in Gardena. He was a gang member in Gardena, and. It, he was spotted by these guys from the local gang in Carson, and they, were, they had like 50 kids going to beat him up at nutrition time, and we had to end up sending him on to another school. He was transferred to some trouble he'd gotten into. And he, we just couldn't protect him there because it was they transferred to the wrong gang territory. Well, I was always against school uniforms, the idea of you know individuality, but once they did school uniforms, I became a believer in them. They're an equalizer. Uh, although we didn't have a lot of like you have in, in upper class areas where you have a lot of competition for quality of clothes for the you know the right label and all that nonsense, but uh, the kids couldn't wear the gang garb; they all looked alike, and so they, they tended to get to less fights and get less less them beat up on the way home. This is down in Carson when they were wearing their uniform; you couldn't tell they were whether they're a gang member or anything else. So that's one of the reasons I believe in, in school uniforms for these younger kids.